So again, today it is a very special day. It's a zero discrimination day. It's a celebration and by all means, uh, the mandate and, and the goal is for just that, zero discrimination. We want to welcome the chairman of the Equal Opportunity Commission, Mr. Ian Roach. He joins us on the Zoom line. Good morning to you and happy Zero Discrimination Day. Good morning, Jason. Good morning, Trinidad Tobago. And thank you very much. And same to you. Fantastic. Great to have you with us this morning. I want to find out first and foremost, before we get into the happenings of the day, uh, what's your role and function as the chairman of the Equal Opportunity Commission? Role and function of the chairman of the Equal Opportunity um, according to the mandate of the Equal Opportunities Act is to chair and to implement. It's a chair board consisting of five, five members in total, a vice chair and three other commissioners uh, that represent a sort of a, a reflection of our society. Mm. Uh, and there are certain, there are certain um, prerequisites to, to be a member of that board in terms of of um, your competencies in roles in society. And, and what we are supposed what we are mandated to do is to promote equality of treatment, to eliminate discrimination, and also to advise the minister from time to time in matters that need to be addressed in order to make uh, in order to achieve the, the ultimate objective of the man um, the mandate of the of the Equal Opportunity Commission, of the Equal Opportunity Act, which yeah. is to eliminate discrimination discrimination across the board. Let me ask you, where, where are they are still, where, where, what areas are we still in this 2023 on this day, March 1st, we're seeing some challenges? Because again, we live in a plural society, you know, there are so many, uh, so many walks of life here, so, so much history, so much in this melting pot called Trinidad and Tobago, and that's, that's the beauty of it, but also uh, therein lies sometimes the problem. Um, where do we have some of the challenges and how do we plan to, to address such issues? Well, first of all, I, I like to, to, be, to keep things in the, in the positive, right? Trinidad, over 60 years of, of existence of an independent nation, we have made significant progress in achieving equality, in inclusion, um, in achieving racial harmony. I mean, our very existence, uh, as I said um, yes, just yesterday on another, um, another um, television station, that kind of was a good, a good um, snapshot of what the beauty of Trinidad is, the positive parts of Trinidad today, where every creed and race, religion, whatever it is, people participate in each other's culture. And carnival as a sort of melting pot reflects that in a dynamic and an energetic and in a very joyful way. So, so we have achieved quite a bit, but of course, there yeah, always work to be done, and there's still work to be done in, in achieving the ultimate objective to have zero discrimination, zero unfair um, treatment to any member of society, where you we know, and whatever their endeavors to be um, to, to to be engaging. We should, anybody, you know, should be able to to once they are competent, once they they are able and willing, they should be able to have equal access. So all the resources and all the opportunities in Trinidad and Tobago. And this is what uh, the focus of the EOC is to achieve. And yes, we will find in, 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 in our um, existence, uh, you will find that there's a lot of still pockets of discrimination in terms of employment. Well, I'm not going to say that because, yeah. you know, there are still challenges in that regard because up to this day, people still cannot put their real address when going forward to get a job or putting forward a resume if they put a particular address in a, in a quote-unquote hot zone and chances are well without a doubt they will not receive gainful employment um yes. you know is there any redress is there any place somebody can go if they would have gone down the straight and narrow they were honest and they believe sincerely that because of their area they're not being given an opportunity of course, Jason, that is, that, is, that, is, that is one of the primary um, reasons for the existence of the Equal Opportunity Commission. So if somebody has applied for a job, you know, and because of their address, uh, they are being discriminated, they are, they are not being given an opportunity to, to, to have access to that employment, they can lodge a complaint at the Equal Opportunity Commission. It will be investigated that we must do. And once once the, the complaint has, has Going out to be to be to be um, not frivolous and has merited it. Um, persons that the institution or, or the employer who has discriminated or, or exhibited that 
level of discrimination will be written to, will be, you know, and will be engaged, and a process will take place in order to, to determine, in fact, what is the nature of it, and, you know, and try to find a resolution. Uh, we will engage in, 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 in conciliatory, um, conciliatory talks. And if that seems with the, with the um, agreement of the, of the individual that has logic up it, it may be well, well um, um, advanced to the equal opportunity tribunal, which is a superior court of record, and that will be dealt with at that level. And that court is empowered by the high court, as a high court, so, um, to, 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 make, um, to make declarations and to impose um, fines and, and, and get redress in a, in a, in, in a very um, significant way. So as, to, so as to, you know, to, 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 to deter people from behavior like that mm -hmm. and to encourage a sort of inclusiveness and a non-discriminatory type of, of selection in, in terms of employment opportunities. Mr. Roach, let me ask you a serious question here now. Our leaders, as far as I'm concerned, uh, should be held to a higher standard. What is done when our leaders, those who are leaders in the public sector, or even private sector, or even professionals, we would have heard some utterances over the last couple of years that you could only cringe. You're hearing big people who should know better, who are educated, who are leaders in their field, sometimes make some really, well, clearly, I can't say out of time, and remember, words are a manifestation of a thought. So when folks of that particular caliber uh, make statements that it's not in keeping with what the mandate uh, is, is, is proposing. Uh, what, what, what is done at that point in time? Do you all get yeah. involved? Do you all pull them square yeah. and just let them know, hey, that's not the way? Well, unfortunately, yeah. unlike, unlike the, um, the Police Complaints Authority, which is a truly independent institution in our society, right? They have the they have the power to investigate, and they don't want. They are not reactionary. They they, they can they can um, act in you know in, in in they may see some 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 sort of a uh, injustice as a result in terms of police conduct or activities, and they may of their own compulsion investigate that. The EOC, unfortunately, the Equal Opportunity Commission does not possess that type of a power. We can only react to complaints that are lodged at the, at the, um, at the institution. We can, we can uh, in our investigations, in, in, sorry, in our analysis of discriminatory practices wherever they have been um, identified, we can make um, suggestions, we can, we can give um, guidelines, we can advise, and so forth. But in terms of actually holding somebody to account in that regard as the um, the police complaint authority as an independent institution can do. We can only react to complaints when they are made. So if somebody is offended by that, by some any one of those persons speaking in high offices, right, and they feel that they are prejudiced or they have been discriminated, there's been some sort of a discrimination, um, they can they can call in larger a complaint at the at the um, equal opportunity commission and we will have we will be compelled to look into it to see what what is made out of it and how it can be um, Result. Understood. And before we get into the activities for today's uh, celebration, Zero, Dis Zero Discrimination Day, uh, how does one go about launching that said complaint? Uh, is it uh, uh, d digitally, email, you come in, uh, you have to fill a form out? Uh, just walk me through the process of, of yes. putting forward that complaint. Yeah, so moving with, 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 with today's technology, um, fortunately, you, you can lodge a complaint digitally. Uh, there is the EOC's. Um, platform on social media, on various social media, Instagram, we have Facebook and so forth. You can, you can download a, a complaint, fill it out and lodge it like that, or you can bring it in physically at our head office at Manic Street, Manic Street in Chavonas. When it is lodged, an uh, uh, officer uh, will be assigned to, the, to, the, to, that, to, that, um, to that complaint who will investigate it. He or she will then um, liaise with the legal unit of the Equal Opportunity Commission so as to make sure that the necessary elements um, to, to ground a complaint in discrimination is being made out. And that will be investigated. The, the, the discriminate person who has, discrimin who has discriminated against the, the person that complaint would be written to. 
and then you have a, a, a number of exchanges of correspondence between the um, between the Equal Opportunities Commission and that um, transgressor or potential transgressor or alleged transgressor. And uh, depending upon what comes out of it, the, 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 both parties will be, in, uh, will be uh, invited to come to the to the uh, to a consultatory session or sessions as it may be as much as may be necessary, so as to resolve it. And a lot have been resolved through um, that type of conciliation, right? If the conciliation fails, and uh, we are of the opinion that it, it, it requires further investigation or different um, need to be advanced to be to be um, investigated or. or, or or dealt with by the Equal Opportunity Tribunal with the consent of the person that should be complained, we will then initiate proceedings before the um, before the, the tribunal. Like I said before, that tribunal is a superior court of record okay. and it has powers of a high court to, to, to look into it and to give you know necessary redress that would be appropriate. Okay, I'm happy to hear that there is an option to bring about reconciliation to have the two parties engage. I think that is yes. uh, part of a healing process because only one party is sometimes sit down and meet face to face. You know, you're able to put aside all bias and, and um, uh, preconceived notions. So I'm happy to, that's, to hear that's, that's an option. That's absolutely true what you're saying. That is absolutely true because many of, the, many of those complaints are resolved at conciliation because a lot of it has to do with ignorance yeah. and suspicion and, you know. So once people sit face to face, a lot can be achieved. Yeah, there is positive. healing. Yeah, there is healing in that in that process. Let me find out. What are the plans for today? Uh, just walk me through what, what's in store for, for today, the big day, Zero well, Discrimination Day. Yeah, well, in keeping with our, with our activities, generally speaking, which is educating the public, right, uh, through various activities. We, uh, we have, since started yesterday, we're going to a number of interviews on the, um, the television, the various stations, uh, also radio stations, through our platforms, our social media platforms, um, um, conversations and, and activities, you know, highlighting the need for 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 understanding each other's um, equal access to opportunities in our society, and sort of so in sort of engaging in dialogue, in, in, in you know, encouraging people to to to, to reach out to us. So as to, to, to receive the necessary information, coaching, guide, guidance, or, assi or assistance in their institutions, we have to be public or private in how to deal with different forms of discrim discriminatory practices, um, whether latent or patent. And so this is what we've been doing. We are just ramping up our, our public awareness and our public educational um, outreach to the public, using today in particular uh, for that purpose. Because yeah. it is a very important day. It's a very important day. It's something that's supposed to be our hoping that will continue to form uh, a regular staple, not only in Trinidad, but throughout the region, as we, as members of the of United Nations, um, um, seek to, to promote that noble high deal of having person, having a society that is, is um, you know, where people can find um, equal opportunity and there's no unfair discrimination. And I keep saying unfair discrimination, you probably may understand why I'm saying unfair discrimination, because there are some discrimination that may not be unfair, but I don't want to get into that to, com to complicate things. So unfair discrimination. Yeah, you know, I always recall when my son was in uh, preschool, uh, dropping him and just watching all the children play and have a time and just mi mix and mingle and I say, you know, the children have it figured out, you know. And even the elderly, when people get to a nice ripe age and, you know, you've gone through life, it's somewhere in between we seem to get caught up. Lose and I, I really hope that, um, you know, the mandate and, and the mission for the zero discrimination can indeed be a reality. It's something we're working towards and we have to support it. I'll give you a chance to put in some closing remarks before we look to wrap things up this morning. Well, thank you very much. I would like to, like to encourage all Trinidad and to be audience as people i think we need to be more inclusive as opposed to be exclusive i think if you look at each other in the way that you look at as you like others to deal with you i mean you will always do the right thing there will be no need for for morals ethics or you know if you treat each other as you like to be treated i mean we need to focus on the human the, on, on being a human being being hum, humanistic in our in our activities and how we think and, and, and not have a myopic, a myopic vision 
of ourselves. If we have a more inclusive um, reflection of, of, of society and each other, we will always do the right thing. So I think we think that we need to be more human in, in, our, in our dealings with each other as a society, as just human beings, because we all have the same needs. And we all, at some point in time, will leave this, will leave this earth. Let's leave it a better place than how we met it. And the, I mean, we live in the Trinidad, which is a paradise in terms of the diversity, the multifacetedness of Trinidad Tobago. It's always mind blowing to many people who are not part and parcel of a side, side like that. When you get, you come in, they get a glimpse of it in, in, in Carnival to begin with. It's a positive reflection of Trinidad Tobago. So I am using today and I'm asking, I'm encouraging my fellow citizens that let us behave as we would like others to treat us. Right with humanity, with, with with compassion and with love, and with that we will be on the right on the right um, trajectory to achieve that noble aspiration of having a society, a world of constitution where where every race, queer and race can find an equal place. Chairman Ian Roach, thank you so much. Great great discussion this morning, and, and I'm happy we're able to really uh, break down all the fundamentals for us and, and walk us through um, just you know your rule and function and what the commission is all about. Thank you so much, and happy like Zero that. Discrimination Day to you Thank and the team, much. and by extension, the nation. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, you're most welcome. Chairman Roach from the Equal Opportunity Commission. We take a pause, we come back, I'll give you some details concerning the show, how you can contact us. And if time permits, we'll try to get some calls in before the 7 o'clock news update. Uh, that number, 624-8721 and 627-86. Five eight. Let's touch base after the break.